Step one, we gotta swap out the wheels and tires with a different set on Rosine. So I actually sold a set of fourth gen stocks to a guy and uh, turns out it's actually 3,500 fourth gen and the stocks came off of a 2,500 fourth gen and the bolt pattern's fine, but apparently the rear hub coming off the axle is a little deeper in terms of overall length, I guess. And so they're like a closed cap wheel. They don't have like removable, you know, hub caps. So they apparently don't fit. So I'm actually gonna just swap him the set that's on this truck, the steel wheels with the open end. And um, I'm gonna swap this set for the other set, which the other set's technically a nicer set of wheels, but this set technically has a little bit better tread. So I just told him we'll just do it square up, no big deal. So let's get. She's up. So most of you will probably remember what set of wheels I'm talking about when I'm saying the SLT wheels, the one piece like closed cap fourth gen wheels. Cause it was on this trip before we made a video putting them on there um, previously, but we're just gonna be putting them back on and swapping these out with him uh, for the set that I sold him. And uh, for the dually, I've got something I gotta go over with you guys as well. So for the dually, I've actually had leather seats scheduled and I've already put 50% down for them over a month ago now. Now, the thing is I didn't have a set schedule of when I was gonna bring the truck in because the truck was at the paint booth when I scheduled the leather interior to get done. However, I did put 50% down, so I did that and the truck's back now, but since I couldn't set a specific date with him, which I explained to him I can't set a specific date yet because I don't know when I'm gonna get the truck back, he said that he can't get the truck in for a week to get the seats done unless I bring the seats in and just drop them off in the shop because he just doesn't have room for another truck there right now or a car or what have you. I mean, he does cars and boats and motorcycles. He, he does everything. So there's all kinds of stuff there all the time, but apparently he is maxed out with parking space right now. He just can't take another vehicle until May 3rd, which is the last day for this truck. I've always saw him like, I gotta have the seats done before that. He's like, if you bring the seats in and you can drop them off in the shop, I can have a guy putting the leather on those and getting that done much sooner than May 3rd, which might be like, you know, May 1st or the last day of April there. That'll at least be better than after the giveaway's over because I want to see the seats in the truck before the giveaway's over and I want you guys to see them with the seats in because for some people that might be a big factor on whether or not they want to enter to win the truck is how cool is that interior, you know, because I've been talking about how the interior is going to be so sick. It would be a shame if you don't get to see it until the giveaway's over. I'm going to try my best. We might pull the truck in the shop today, park it in the shop. That way I can pull the seats out and while the seats are getting done over the next few days, we can get to working under the hood and getting some stuff done. We got to do the twin intake system. We got to do the injectors, a whole bunch of stuff. So let's get to it. fits in the shop almost perfectly. Looks looks great, looks great. So the goal is gonna be to pull the seats out of this truck and take them up to the interior shop. There's a few things I gotta get out of here in terms of uh, blankets, some water bottles and stuff like that that are just in the truck. But we gotta pull this stuff out and then hopefully it, it won't be a total pain in the butt. And then we can haul the seats up to get those done. And then the truck actually fits and it gives us enough room once I move some of these fuel cans and stuff and some of these boxes to where we have enough room to actually do the engine work that we've got to do on this thing. I might even try to pick up the creeper from my dad's so that I have it this week to do everything that I've got to do on this truck because it's going to be a handful. And I just would really, really like having that to help get this done because getting over these engine bays and hanging over them and putting stuff in. can sometimes be a pain in the butt when you're talking like heavy S400 series turbos and stuff like that mounted to a manifold or what have you. It could just be a pain in the butt if you're trying to lean over the fender and not crinkle it or dent it or scratch stuff up. So that's what we're gonna try to do. So let's get to swapping those wheels up, Rosine. Then we're gonna get to taking the seats out and getting these ran up to the upholstery shop ASAP.
are pulled and everything is ready to go off to the upholstery shop. Pretty freaking simple, just bolts. I mean, that's all it is to hold these seats in. So what we're gonna do now is we are gonna run Rosine up to the upholstery shop and then we're going to drop the front and rear seats off to get the upholstery work done. We're also gonna be dropping off a sub box hopefully and I don't know if he's gonna be able to get the sub box done as fast as he can get the seats done because I think he's already got all the leather done for the seats and he's just gotta basically mold them over. In terms of the sub box, I don't know exactly how long it's gonna take him to do that. It's a pretty simple design, it's just a box. But, you know, we'll see what he says and I'll let you know uh, what he says on that if it's something he can get done quick or if it's something that's gonna take a little bit more time. Well, the sub box is out and it's getting leather wrapped along with the dually seats. We did get some new parts in for the dually and I'm gonna go over all those. I was gonna go into the intake setup on that truck today, the twin intake setup, but I thought maybe instead of starting on that right away, I might actually go into the entire compound kit that just showed up for the truck today. That way, you guys know exactly what to expect because we are running low on time. I already showed you guys the twin intake setup. Although I'd love to work on that today, I'd rather explain to you and show you the entire compound kit. That way, you guys have a full understanding of what's getting put on the truck because there's not much time left to enter and I'd hate for you to not be able to see that as soon as possible to help you decide whether or not you want to enter to win this free truck and make sure it's the right compound kit that you would like to have on your new dually. Either way, it's a truck that you could win for a buck, literally. I just think it'd be nice if you guys could see it. You guys could see the kit because, um, I think it's gonna be pretty cool and I want everybody to see it as soon as possible so they know exactly what's going on. I did actually get a new front basket for the ATV as well. I know that I showed you guys the rear one. I didn't film the front one because nobody really seemed too crazy excited about the rear basket video. So I've got the front one on here. However, I do have a link for this basket in the description below if you guys wanna go check this out on Amazon. Also, if you use those links below, by the way, it does actually give me a small commission if you order stuff after clicking on those links. So that does help out the channel and what we're doing on here as well. So keep that in mind. Also, we're gonna use the Gorilla Cart. I do have a link to one of these in the description below if you want to use it. I, just, I use this thing all the time when stuff gets dropped off at the front door, loaded up in here, tires get dropped off, load them up in here, pull them out to the barn. If I gotta use it at the property, pull this pin, it slides down, hook it up to the ATV, and then I can use it to get firewood, all kinds of stuff. 1,600 pound capacity on this particular model. Crazy. So I use it for all kinds of stuff. Link in the description. Let's go load it up with some turbos and piping kits. In this one box is a turbo. Okay guys, so we've got the compound turbo kit here. Hopefully everything's here. It looks like it should be. We've ordered one of these kits before in terms of almost anything we've ever bought from Pusher. Now Pusher did not sponsor this video and I, I didn't actually even ask for a sponsorship just because we haven't, we haven't worked with them in a couple of years on any product. So I just bought this kit outright, but it would be great to work with you guys in the future here if we decide to do more of these kits. We haven't done a lot of like engine bay modifications in quite some time, and I would really love to get back to doing that. And Pusher offers a lot of great stuff, especially for, they offer stuff for Power Strokes, Duramax stuff, uh, Cummins stuff, everything. I especially love the stuff that they do offer for the 5.9 Cummins trucks. Their compound turbo kit is I would say very close to being second to none. I mean, it's it's a pretty sweet kit. Uh, my dad's truck has had his kit on it for three years now. He has not had a single issue with the kit itself. But that being said, let's get into this. The first thing is going to be the turbo that we went with, and it is actually an S471. This dude is, it's heavy. I mean, it's a, it's a big turbo. And this thing is a monster. Here it is. Give you guys a good look at this. Thing is huge. <laughs> at least huge compared to a stock second gen turbo. This thing is massive. So that's the big turbo, obviously. And with this kit, we're actually going to be using the stock turbo for the primary turbo. The uh, For the small turbo, we're gonna be staying with that stock one. And that's how my dad's flatbed set up. And that truck, it's never been dynoed, but we estimate that truck to be around like 550 to 600 horsepower. Based on what we did to it, we literally talked to people and other specialists in the diesel world and said, hey, 
we want six, you know, 500 to 600 horsepower, what do we do? And that's what we went off of was what a couple of different people said in terms of parts and build list. The goal with this truck was try to keep it, you know, it's not a drag truck, it's not a, you know, street truck. It's a daily workable workhorse. If you want to hook a gooseneck to it, it does have a gooseneck hitch in it. You can do that. It's got airbags under the rear end that you can fill up or deflate depending on if you're hauling or not hauling. We just wanted to build this truck to be a reliable, daily drivable or heavy hauling application. So that's why we're going with the 400 horse-ish mark just because it seems like a nice fitting amount of power to go with a truck like this to be able to have plenty of power to do your day-to-day -day work and not have to worry about wishing you had a little bit more because for most applications 400 horsepower with a compound setup you should be able to stay cool and work efficiently so that's that was the goal instructions that they give you with the kit which is actually pretty sweet so pusher actually gives you a small binder and it's literally got everything in it with colored photos not just black and white photos but colored photos comes with a sticker a koozie i mean it shows you pictures of how to do everything based on what you selected at checkout i mean it's it's pretty sweet how they lay it all out there for you and this is one of those things that you know some companies will just have one online and be like oh go look it up if you want to find it i don't know about you but when i'm looking to install something and it could be potentially frustrating. Do I want to look at a screen this size or do I want to look at a freaking gigantuous photo right next to me while I'm in the engine bay not have to worry about dropping my phone down in there and busting it or whatever or getting grease all over. I just would rather have freaking instructions in hand that are clear with photos with color step by step and I mean hey some guys don't need that and they can just tear into any engine bay and figure it out. Me personally, instructions are a freaking huge part of why I buy some of the things that I buy. Because I want to be able to do it and not have to look all over the internet on proper ways to get the job done. Now there was a bunch of different color options you could have gone with with this kit. Pusher offers a huge variety of options. I wanted to go with red because I had already spent like $500 on a Banks twin intake setup that I already had. Pusher does make a mega twin setup, which I would have bought if I didn't already have, like a $500 intake sitting around the shop. But the Pusher Red is almost completely identical to the Banks twin intake red color. I mean, it is very, 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 I mean, I don't even know if I can tell the difference. Like I said though, if I wouldn't have already bought this like two years ago and had it laying around, I would have gone with the pusher setup. It's just, you know, when it's not a sponsorship deal and I am paying full price for it, the kit that I bought was, I think, 3,200 bucks, maybe. 32 or 3,400 dollars. So, you know, when you're already spending that kind of money, to try to keep it away from being 4,000 bucks, I just, you know, I just went with an intake that I had already purchased previously. In fact, if you've seen my dad's flatbed truck that I did for him, that truck has the pusher twin intake setup on it. So if you guys want to go check that out, those videos are all over the channel as well. It's called the Nasty Red Playlist. So here's another piece of your intake piping. This is going to be what goes on the front to connect your small turbo to your big turbo. And it's just going to be connected by a couple of couplers gonna go right on the front here. And then this part right here is gonna be actually the part that mounts to the back of your small turbo. And it's gonna mount down onto your big turbo, I believe. What that's gonna actually do is feed that exhaust from the back side of your HX35 onto your S471, in my case, because it's an S471. And then it'll go like that. And then, you know, of course your exhaust is pretty much right behind that there. It just goes directly from one to the other like that. Now this is your bracket that goes on the side, the passenger side of the block. It actually mounts up, I believe, to the bell housing of the transmission, and then it also bolts onto the side of the block. And then of course it's got your oil drain right here. This is your oil drain for your bottom turbo, your big turbo. And uh, that's pretty much that. I mean, this will sit right down on top of this and this gives you some stability for your turbo. And this is gonna help with some stability because your turbo's gotta mount onto this. And this bracket with this angle iron in this welding is, this is, this is high end. I mean, this is gonna withstand a lot of freaking weight. It's technically probably a little overkill, but I mean, I'd rather it be overkill than, than underdeveloped and leave you desiring more. And then there's also a bracket here for a battery relocation. There are kits out there that are designed to where then you don't have to re relocate your 
passenger side battery, but it's such an easy thing to do. I mean, it's just a couple of bolts and then this relocates it out of the way. That way your intake is closer to the front of the engine compartment where the air is getting through sooner right behind your grill. That's to me, I think that's kind of the whole point of the kit is to where then you can get cooler air faster versus having your intake, you know, come out and then have to go up behind your passenger side battery and then it's like up against the firewall, which is fine, but think about it in theory, where do you think you're gonna get colder air when you're going down the road or down the drag strip or hauling heavy or whatever, it doesn't matter. If you're moving forward, there's a good chance that the cooler air is gonna be at the front of the engine bay right up against the grill where the air's flowing in not at the back of the engine bay up against the firewall where there's just more heat. I mean, that's just the reality that it is. I mean, that's just reality is there's more heat towards the back of the engine bay than there's going to be at the front when you're moving down the road. And the last piece of the puzzle is your downpipe. Now, the downpipe is a five inch downpipe and they make them um, to either go to a four inch exhaust or a five inch exhaust for this particular one. And I opted for a five inch downpipe that went to a four inch exhaust. So. Uh, this is definitely an inlet for a five inch. So I don't know if there's like an adapter in one of those boxes or something that I haven't opened. There's a couple of small boxes I haven't opened that you can just tell it's a bunch of hardware and couplers and stuff, clamps and all that jazz. So it may come with an adapter, I'm not sure, but either way, it's not a big deal. I can, I can get one easy enough. And it comes heat wrapped because it is very, very, very close to your firewall back there. And it does come pretty stinking close to touching a few things when it goes down the heat wrap helps so let me show you the full kit all laid out here's the turbo right here i've got the child in the shop with me right now so the wife can do some work and here's all the clamps couplers gaskets not part of the kit that's a banks twin thing um this part here goes there that's what that is this part here is for your main intake coming out this part down here is what this is for and this air to air on the back that's what this is for exhaust battery relocation bracket downpipe lower turbo mounting bracket with oil feed line and filter so that is everything and hopefully you guys got a good example of everything that comes with this kit this whole week is going to be working like crazy on doing this thing we've got head studs injectors and this stuff i mean all sorts of stuff we're going to put in this trick all this week is the goal so hopefully we don't run into any major complications but you know how it goes when you're working on stuff it just kind of happens sometimes unfortunately but i've done this kit before now i know how to do it it's been a little while, but I remember it very vividly. Anyways, guys, hopefully you enjoyed this video. It actually works out nice having this interior empty for now to be able to lay all this stuff in here and not get it all dusty. I was like, where am I gonna put this? If I leave these boxes open, they're gonna get covered in crap. But this actually works out very nicely because this stuff should all be done by the time I get the seats back because the seats are supposed to be done by the end of the week. We'll see how that goes. Anyways, guys, if you'd like to enter to win this beautiful maximum steel metallic 12 valve Cummins five speed manual dually plus $5,000 cash, you can do that and it's very simple. All you gotta do is go to lnpgear.com and every $1 you spend is gonna get you 20 entries, yes, 20X entries are live. Every $1 is gonna get you 20 entries towards winning this truck plus five grants. So if you wanna get in, hurry up. Clock is ticking, last week to enter. Get in while you can. Thanks, I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace.